I've opened a project called Classroom BIM Example Begin. It's in your class folder. What I want to do is just show you what I mean by a building information model because it's more than the fact that the product is keeping track of building elements. Uh, you know, what is the quantities of walls, doors, windows, uh, and all of that. It's also that it's keeping track of relationships that you built into the building. And the easiest way I can show you this is um, by having you pick on this C grid and then where you've got a dimension already placed you'll be able to edit the dimension in that location and change that to say 10 so it's going to be 10 feet then hit enter. And what I'm doing is driving the outside of the building by changing the location of the grid line. So off of that grid line the walls are connected, the floors are connected to the inside of the wall, the roof is connected to the, the wall as well. To make this a bit more obvious um, I've, I've done a couple of things. Uh, one thing I want you to do is is you can click on 3D view or up here or down here in the menu uh, where it says 3D. But Whichever one you pick, I've, I've opened the second view that's showing the building. And what I'm going to do now is under the view tab, I'm going to go and say tile the windows to put them side by side. Uh, I'm quite glad that actually came up like this. When you've got multiple views open, this is something that slows your machine down. So what you do if you've got this, I'm, I'm looking at the mezzanine level, the ground level and the 3D. I'm going to close the uh, the one view I don't want and then tile again to put them side by side and then I can click to make a view active and roll in to actually set up the view. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm glad that came up because nine times out of ten when somebody says that Revit Architecture is running slow for them it either means that they've got multiple views where the shadows are turned on like this that's something that we I kind of indicated I was going to show you more but when I talked about the user interface. It's either they've got multiple views with shadows on or they've actually got multiple projects and multiple views open at the same time. So making sure that you're not really working in more than one or two views at one time is a good good practice. And so let me show you now the editing. When I go back to this view to make it active ground, this is a camera looking at my, my database, I pick on that and I'm going to change that value back to 15. Enter and watch the view on the left. You see it change? And I'll do it one more time just quickly to do that. So if I set a value in here, let's say 5. Uh, don't worry about the path stopping. It's because I didn't make it connected to the building. Just watch the building. If I go back in here, and I'm going to change this back to the 15 that we began with. I'm actually like flexing the whole building. Okay, the other way that this works is if you imagine uh, that the, 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 that is because this grid is what's called a datum and things are built off of it. The other way this would work would be if I, for example, close this down and I'm going to open up one of the elevation views. So I'm going to go to say the south elevation and I'll, I'll click my tile again. So in this here you'll see that what happens is that if I if I take a elevation and I change say the height of the roof that's the level cutting through there. If I say change that to uh, uh, what have I got 10 feet let's make that 15 and watch the model on the right. I'm actually able to drive, it's a little short on head height there, let's put that back up to uh, 25 feet. So it's 25 feet up from the zero zero. So imagine I had 11 feet floor to floor, right? So I'd come down here and I'd say change that to uh, 21. And there's the adjustment made to my building. Okay, so what I want to show you next is how to build those relationships into the actual model and how to place the actual building components.